episode number five of 94 Feet, where KP and Tim go on into what's going on in the hoops world. How you doing today, KP? I'm doing great, man. We had a little wiffle ball tournament for our football team today, and I got some sun, and now I'm ready to talk some hoops. Well, there you go. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> As you guys know, we start with the question of the day, and we have, is it going to be Giannis? Or is it going to be LeBron for MVP? Put it down there in the comments because that's exactly what we're about to hop into to talk about. And overall, there's a the NBA awards overall because they talked about that they said that they're only going to take what happened in the original season into account when talking about what's going on in the award picks for all the awards. So in that case... Who do you have, MVP, LeBron or Giannis? I mean, you you already know I got that old vintage Cavs jersey on. Uh, I'm going to go with LeBron. Uh, this dude, he's just something else, man. And I, I know we talked about this a little bit before. Um, but here, here's here's my justification. Okay, And I know you disagree, but it's fine. You don't, um, know, what I, you don't in, know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> he's in year 16, which I think should be part of it. Uh, he's averaging... 26 uh, points, eight rebounds, uh, ten and a half assists. He's shooting 49.8 percent from the field. He's shooting 34.9 percent from three. I I just I don't I don't see how you don't have him there uh, or whoever doesn't have him there. I mean he he really could win this award any year, um, but this year the way the team's playing, the way that he's been playing, he, he he's got it in my opinion. And that's what it is, is it's your opinion. Because it's Giannis, <laughs> and it's not even close. It's easily what's going on. Because, dude, Giannis is averaging nearly 30 points per game, 13 rebounds per game, and 6 assists per game, while his team yeah. has the number one record in the league. Yep. It's not yeah. even a conversation here. No, it really is. And <laughs> here's, here's why. Here's exactly why. Okay. okay? So, Giannis... Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, I just had it. I'm sorry. I'm looking up his last year's stats, okay? Because last year he had a very similar, not the same, but very similar year, all right? So he has, you said 30, 13. Really, you could say 30 and 14, uh, all, all that stuff, okay? So last year, let's see, let's see. Okay. Points per game. Uh, why does it not tell me this? Why does it not tell me this? Oh my gosh! Oh, I mean, wow. you can look up last year's stats. That's fine. But we're talking about this but here's, year. Here's, okay. No, but here's here's why. Here's here, here's yeah. the reason. Okay. Right. Like, if you're the MVP, uh -huh. if you are the MVP, shouldn't you make it out of your conference? LeBron left your conference. Your conference was that much easier, and he didn't win his conference. So why are we going back to last season? This is a, this season award. Okay. This because is a 2019 2020 season award. And it's he's averaging more points, more rebounds, and what a two assists less, a assists and, and I, a half and less. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet. Like that it's his team crazy. Doesn't his team will still not win a championship, Tim? It does not matter. Oh well. Okay. All right. So you you just think LeBron should get it every single year? No, I think that he's earned it every single year. Not that he should just get it. He's earned it. It's, okay. People then why does he the win the championship every year? LeBron doesn't win the championship every single year. But who's there every year? He was there for eight straight years. Who cares? He didn't win What do you mean, it. who cares? He didn't win oh it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Giannis didn't win either. I know, but that's what... I don't know why and we're bringing this up. he's not going to win this year, so giving him this award is doing nothing for him. Nothing for him. He doesn't, <laughs> like... He literally, like, his stats, sure, whatever. But most valuable player, right? What happened when LeBron gets hurt on the Lakers? What happens? They might not make the playoffs. Oh, no, like, they would make the playoffs they this year. They would make the playoffs this year. One that, uh, no, they wouldn't. No. Yeah, they would be They would be uh, right there in the cost of making the playoffs. Yeah, because uh, Anthony Davis, he's made the playoffs every year that he's – yeah, for sure. Oh, no. wait. No, he hasn't made the playoffs. So he's not that player. LeBron makes players themselves. He makes oh, them the, well, mo the not, best they can be. I'm not saying that LeBron is not fantastic, okay? Uh, I know that he's a great player. No, I know. But it's but a season – we're talking about most season... valuable to your team. Most valuable to your team. Not best score, not best rebound. Most valuable player. So, That's LeBron Lakers James. without LeBron 
Bucks without Giannis, you're taking the Bucks. The Bucks would make the playoffs for no, sure. No, I'm talking about head to head because you're, we can't no, compare. No, no, no. that's not the question. That's no, not the question. No, 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 no. no. We can't compare who would make the playoffs because one's in the East and one's in the West, and we all know the West is much, 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 much better to make the playoffs. The Wizards have a chance of making the playoffs right now, like negative fourteen games or something. It's stupid. Okay, like the Wizards they, might not have a team down there, but sure. Right. What's that? The Wizards might not have a team down in Orlando <laughs> right now, but we'll see. We'll figure it out later. Fair enough. But no, the it's a this season award, okay, and it's a regular season award, okay. Mm-hmm. If you want the MVP of the playoffs, you make it to the finals and you win, and you make the finals MVP. Okay, that is how you win the MVP of the playoffs. This is a regular season award. He's averaging more points, more rebounds. His team has a better re- uh, record, and he's averaging six assists as a big man. And he's the Greek freak. He right, is so winning this, show, going me, away, unanimous let me, let me show you, decision. Let me show you. He What's played it? 36 minutes last time they played the Lakers. 36 minutes. That's, so that's 12 minutes less than the total game. Mm-hmm. He scored 32 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. Great stats. You know what? That's a double-double. It's a solid double-double. Probably had some blocks mixed in there, too. What happened? They lost. He can be. He can score as much as he wants. He can rebound the heck out of the ball. He can do whatever he wants. But his... So uh, what you're or, telling me is that his team is not as good as the Lakers. How many points did uh, uh, LeBron have in that game? 37. 37? He had 8 assists, 8 rebounds. What was the score of that game? Arguably a better stat line. Huh? What was this? 113, 103. 113, 103. Lakers won by 10. Yeah. Lakers so if, won you by take, 10. I think, if you take away the bronze sure the points, the and you take away... The Bucks hit a bogus three at the end to make it 103, so they really only matter. had 100. Look, if he... If he... If you take away Giannis's points, and you take away LeBron's points, LA still wins that game. LA's a better team than Bucks are without their best player. LeBron is more valuable to his team. And it doesn't matter. LeBron's Period. not winning the championship this year. But anyway, Period. that's that's the conversation Period. for later. Okay, that's the conversation for later. Jeez. All right, we're going to move on from that one because we can go on forever. Giannis Fairly is the MVP. Certain. We agreed. You heard him. All right. So. Wow. All right, next is. This is my last show. <laughs> he said that last week. Don't don't forget. All right. <clears throat> so, defensive player of the year. Who do you have as your defensive player? I actually don't know who you have with this. Right. I, I purposely didn't write those in there. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, I have Giannis winning defensive player of the year. <laughs> you have Giannis winning defensive player of the year. Yeah. Okay. As much hate as I just talked on him, I have Giannis winning defensive player of the year. I know because he Although, sucks and he, he's not going to win the championship. So why give him any rewards? Why give him rewards? He's not winning any championships. <laughs> No, no, no. I said, why well, give him the MVP? Because he's not, he's no, not it's fine. that I get it. valuable. We, we, anyway, we moved on from the MVP. We no, on. we didn't. But anyway, it was fine. Um, <laughs> so I have Giannis winning defensive player of the year. I think, honestly, he can guard, um, I mean, really, realistically, he can probably guard some twos in the league, but more than likely he can guard, you know, three through five uh, effectively. He's athletic. He's long, block shots. Uh, he's an energy kind of player. He's you know, if he switches on a guard, like, I don't have a problem with him if he, you know, whatever. So, I, I think Giannis is an all-around defensive player. Um, I would like to give it to Kawhi, but Kawhi takes too many games off and, and all that. And I don't even know if he's really in the conversation. So, Giannis is my guy for defensive player of the year. Well, I have Giannis winning the MVP, and I don't think they're going to give the MVP and defensive player of the year the same player. So, while Giannis could, him, so. could definitely earn the defensive player of the year, I think Anthony Davis, he's Third in blocks, two and a half blocks per game, and 15th in steals as a big man at one and a half. And we all know that he is a complete, he shuts down the middle. Anybody coming in, like, you do not want to drive against Anthony Davis unless you're Zion Williamson. But, and the Lakers are the third in defense efficiency in the league, and Davis has a lot to do with that. So I think that Davis ends up earning this defensive player of the year, and that would be my vote for Anthony Davis. You know, like to your point, actually, I, I was just thinking about this. Um, like when you were saying he's like, uh, was he third in blocks? You said mm-hmm. so. Uh, I, I like to think of the like surprise factor. Like, I'm I'm always surprised when like Giannis gets dunked on. You know, like he's just so long. Like when Kawhi Leonard and Giannis were playing last year in the Eastern Conference Finals, and Kawhi had like two breakaway dunks on on top of Giannis, or maybe they were just like in the half court offense, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. 
um, I was like shocked. I'm like, I've never seen someone go like hard at Giannis and win. You know, mm-hmm. like that's that's not something that happens. But I really can't recall too many times where like a dunk like that has happened to Anthony Davis. So may I mean, defensively, like he he is legit. Like there's there's no question about it. It's just yeah. I don't know. I like Giannis a little bit better. I don't know why. It's just different. Fair enough. Giannis is amazing. So defensively, yeah. I was talking about. Obviously, he's amazing all the way around. But all right, so we disagree that you have Giannis. I don't. I I would see. I could see Giannis, but I, as I said, I have him as my MVP. So I don't think they're going to give it to the same player. So I think Anthony Davis takes the defensive player of the year. Next, we're going to move on to the sixth man of the year, and I'm going to start this one because I think it comes down to two players on the same team, which is. I wonder if that's ever happened, like, where the top two six-man-of-the-year candidates are coming off the bench off the same team. So they're six and seven on their team. And I think it comes down to Lou Williams and Montrezl Harrell from the Clippers. And their stats are pretty darn close. Like, they're very close to each other, where they both are averaging 18.6 per game. Lou Williams has the a bit of a little bit of an edge in the assists because he's a point guard. Harrell has the edge a, a bit of an edge in the rebounds because he's a small forward power forward combo. So, yeah. who is going to take it? And Lou is going for his three years in a row. This would be his third year in a row taking the sixth man of the year. But this year, I think that Harrell takes it because if you look at his. Uh, he has a slightly better plus minus on the court. Uh, it was, I believe, a plus four for Harrell and plus three point six for Lou. And they also have a Pi stat, which is the player impact estimate. And Harrell mm-hmm. slightly leads that one as well at fourteen and a half to lose twelve point four stat. And so both of them are deserving of it. Both of them are fantastic six man. But I think that Harrell steals the th- the three peat from Lou and takes it as the sixth man of the year. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, I'm also going to disagree. I don't have either of those players in my uh, conversation. Um, obviously, they, they des- are deserving of it. Um, and uh, any, any of these people that we're picking really could be, like, whatever award you want to give them. Um, but I I have a surprise here. I have Derek Rose, and I'm a Rose hater. Uh, so you know this is, this is real. And, and here's why. I was just looking this up uh, a little bit before our show. Um, he is averaging uh, career highs in field goal percentage, field goal, or sorry, not career highs. He's, haver- he's averaging above his career percentages mm-hmm. in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, efficient field goal percentage. Uh, his per is up by almost three points, which is ridiculous. Um, and he's averaging 18 a game off the bench. Now, that's not uh, anything like crazy because like the field players you just said, 18.6. Um, he is playing in the Eastern Conference, so uh, like we said, we say this all the time, Eastern Conference is a little bit easier, all that stuff. Um, but he's on Detroit I, now, I don't right? know, man. Yeah, he's with Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, he's coming off of some pretty terrible injuries. I mean, that first leg injury, his first knee injury he had, I, I remember just like in my dorm room and, and talking to a couple of my buddies that are obviously a huge Chicago fans because we went to school near Chicago. Mm-hmm. And and I, I just remember just like the the – like lump, like torture that he went through to like rehab his knee and get back in play, but now it looks like he's not even like like he he's back to you know vin- vintage whatever you want to call it Derrick Rose where he is you know like scoring the ball he's playing pretty hard he's learned how to shift his weight a little bit and I I, I mean he's a huge piece to that Detroit team that Detroit team uh, team struggles um, and he comes off the bench and gives them you know his production. Uh, let's see Which, how many minutes per since game you just playing. since you just said the, the, uh, mentioned the struggles, that's exactly why I did not put, uh, excuse me, uh, Derek Rose in my conversation because the team is not good enough. I think a lot of these awards that they talk about, they they go to players on good teams, like on teams that are mm-hmm. making it, and yeah, uh, like because I think it was also like Ben, uh, what was his name again? Ben Adeo. Simmons. Oh, uh, Adebayo. Adebayo. Bam, Adebayo. Yeah. Yeah. Bam, Adebayo. That's who it is. Yep. Um, yep. I think he was in the conversation as well. Um, no, no, no. It wasn't him because he's on the Heat. Who was it then? There was right. a couple other. Crap. I can't remember who it was now. Um, oh, Schroeder was on there. Oh, um, uh, Dennis think, Schroeder. Yep. Yeah. And I think. 
didn't like it because his team, and I think it was one other one, that none of those teams were doing anything productive. Yeah. So George that's what, Hill's the other one. George, George Hill's Hill. on the Bucks, I think, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, George Hill. But George Hill was not – like, I mean, if you look at what's going on – I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's – I think that's – he's a distance – Distant guy, to, he's not comparable, in my opinion, to Harold. He's, he's, and Lou. he's on the list. He's on the list because of what you just said. Like he's on the list because his team wins. Like that, yeah. that's why he's on that list. So in that, the that's conversation, one we can probably take off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I would not mind if Derrick Rose get it because I agree. When I looked at what he was doing this year, like um, he is having a very good year, of uh, coming back from all the injuries you, yeah. you talked about. So I. I would not mind to see that, but I think that they're going to give it to a player on a playoff caliber team, and that's why I think that Harold will take it this year. But if Derrick Rose wins it, I would not be upset by that because I think he has done enough to earn it. All right. But can I just kind of oh. one more piece in there? Yeah, go ahead. My last argument for this. My last argument for this. Uh, right now, Derrick Rose's six man is averaging 27.3 minutes per game, and he's averaging 18 points a game. Uh, when he was – Arguably, in like his prime, still uh, uh, he was averaging 37 minutes a game and 21 points. So he's he's only averaging three, three points less, less points with like 10 less minutes. Nine, yeah. nine minutes, less. like that's that's huge, especially in the NBA. Um, coming off two like devastating knee injuries. I, I mean, I hate knee injuries. Those are the worst. Um, but he yeah. he went through it. With, he's just so, so explosive so. that right. it's it's too too damaging well, on those say, knees. They would say whenever he crosses over and switches his weight, he puts like 90% of his weight on one foot. So eventually that's going to break down. Like that's not something that you can sustain. Like you were saying, explosiveness like that. Like that's – you got to figure a way to balance that. So I think he's found that. I think he's he's really improved and, and adapted his game very well. Fair enough. All right. Who will is your most improved player this year? Oh, man. Um, I have two. This is tough. So, I have Pascal Siakam as one of them. Mm-hmm. And the reasoning for me is they have the same record without Kawhi. And Kawhi was a – I'm, I'm going to be, uh, you know, generous here. Not generous, really. But uh, I'm going to say he was, what, a 20-point-per-game scorer last year? I mean, probably probably more than that, really, with, with the Raptors, how they were. Um but their their record is the same, missing an, an all star like that. And Pascal is at this focal point of, of this of this Raptors team. He is um, keeping their team together. He's their defensive like key. Uh, teams have to uh, you know watch him all the time and make like make sure they know where he's out on the court and different things like offensively or defensively. Um, and I was I was way too low. Uh, Kawhi averaged twenty six and a half last year. So missing twenty six and a half points per game. Um, Keeping your core guys, obviously, but Pascal, man, like if you just watch his game tape, like his skill level at the beginning of last year to his skill level now, it, it's night and day. It really is. Like I, I thought when he first came into the league, um, he couldn't dribble and like look up at the same time. Or you don't know, like people say like you can't walk and chew gum. Like he couldn't dribble and look up. Like it which wasn't his thing. Um, but now he is uh, more aggressive offensively. He's he's getting to the basket. He's shooting better. Um, and I, I think he's he's a more improved player. My second person uh, is Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram, for me, I hated him when LeBron first went to the Lakers. I thought he was a waste of space. I didn't like him. I, he <laughs> never he he literally like in the whatever how many games LeBron played 40, 40 games or whatever he played. Um, he never no he missed twenty seven games in a row, so he didn't even play forty games anyway. Um, but uh, he never made a shot. Like I seriously think I watched like twelve games in a row where Brandon Ingram would be wide open and misses a shot. And I don't know how that's possible for an NBA player, but, but he did that. Um, the only place he really dipped for, uh, for what I saw from this year to last year, from last year, this year was his field goal percentage went down, um, from 40, really basically 50% to 47%. Um, but his, uh, three point percentage went up by, um, 5%. So he went from 33% to 38%. His free throw percentage is the big one. That went up, uh, what was that, uh, 18%. He, he improved his free throw percentage 
leaps and bounds from what it seems. Um, and he, he's, he's also a player that is a defensive key. He, he's a very uh, long, lengthy kind of, kind of defender. He's very stringy. Um, he gets his hands in passing lanes things. I just, I think that he's, he's improved a lot. I don't, I don't hate him anymore. Um, so that's really what I'm going off of. I guess. So I, I don't mind your Brandon Ingram, but to me, and I told you this, uh, yeah. off the, off the air <laughs> is that people like Luca and Pascal Siakam and people like this, that have, I think, I don't think of these players as like most improved because I think th- I thought of them was already good. It's already legit. So like now that they've just taken a little bit of like a step forward in their game, just as they get older, I don't necessarily look at that as somebody has been improved. But I do think that Brandon Ingram is somebody that, um, you know, like was a little underperforming of what people ex- expectations were, and now taking a step forward, I'd like that one that pick better. But I think who deserves this award for sure, but I don't think he'll get it. Is Devonte Graham? <clears throat> excuse me. For the uh, who's it? The Charlotte Hornets. Yep. Yep. Uh, he he has he's a point guard for them. He's quadrupled his points per game from last year, from four point seven to eighteen point two. His everything's up. His field goal percentage is up four percent. His three point percentage is up nine percent. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Where was his free throws? His free throws is up six percent. Like everything's improved from year uh, from last year, but I think that the fact that the Hornets suck is that he's not going to get it. But I just wanted to mention him because I think that if he does get it, I would not be surprised just because of the leaps and bounds improvement from last year. But I think who's going to get this is Bam Adebayo, and he's doubled his points per game from last year. The Heat are very solid. I think they're sitting fourth in the East right now. Yep, and. He's upped his rebounds from 7.3 to uh, 10.5. Like uh, his uh, assists yeah. went up nearly two and a half. Like I think that Bam Idebayo is going to get this most improved player. Uh, this is somebody that you know you don't you didn't know I, at least I didn't know too much about him last year, and now he's you know one of the better players on a really good team down there with Jimmy Butler. So yeah, and I like them Bam trading Idebayo. away. Uh... Them trading away Hassan Whiteside helped them out a lot with with his development because I don't think he'd be where he's at obviously because Hassan took all those minutes away from him. He's an undersized big, but I, I yeah I see what your point is and um, he's definitely improved a lot uh, mm-hmm. from from last year and that might just be because he's getting to play more. I mean really. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, and so I would like I would like to see him earn that uh, award. I think he's definitely deserving of it. But if I were to actually pick, I would say Devonte Graham. I think Devon. Devontae Graham is whom I'm rooting for, but I think it'll be more... Uh, I like your Brandon Ingram pick, and I think Bam Adebayo has a very solid chance of winning it this year. The, the one reason I wouldn't give it to Devontae Graham is because Kemba Walker was there last year, and Devontae Graham literally never left the bench unless Kemba was a little tired. Like that's So he's getting, instead of getting whatever he was getting last year, what, like 12 minutes a game, he's getting you know 36 minutes now. I think it was like 15 um, minutes a game, 14 yeah, minutes like that. Yeah, so like, even even if those are you know fifteen yeah, straight 7. minutes, yeah, like we know those aren't we know those aren't straight five. minutes anyway. So he's probably getting like three minutes here, three minutes there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's never gonna be in a rhythm like that. But now you get you know Kemba's gone. Uh, you have more space in, in your offense a little bit. Um, he, he improved obviously. He's going to improve, but I think there's there's a lot more factors that go into that than just you know him getting actually better. Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but. I think you lose an all-star like Kemba, and that's a, that's a huge, um, you know. Well, yeah, obviously that's for, why for his you. production is up. But, I mean, it's one thing to have your production up, but he's, like, quadrupling your points per game. I mean, that's – with, what, two and a half times more minutes, quadrupling your points per game? I yeah. I don't know. And also, as I said, all of his efficiency numbers are up as well when he's on the court. So, Yes, obviously him getting more playing time is going to help those numbers, but I think that with that playing time, he's exceeded expectations, I think, from what he was like from based on year to year. So I would like to see him get it. All right, next up, we got Coach of the Year. You want to go first or you want me to go first? <laughs> Before I even looked at like who was in the running, I just looked at this and I was like, all right, 
I like Nick Nurse. And then I look it up, and it's like, yeah, he's <laughs> he's in that. Yeah. He's definitely in that conversation. And I know, is that who you have as well? Yeah, I, mean, I, it's, okay. it's, I don't think it's a conversation at all, honestly. <laughs> right. I mean, because I'll just say it then, because this would be a lot of the same yeah. points. Is I mean, team lost arguably the best player in the league with Kawhi Leonard. Um, at least probably second best in yep. your mind. Um, maybe yep. third behind fourth Giannis. Best, but yeah. it does, okay, fourth best. Arguably one of the <laughs> – arguably the best because it finals MVP, wherever he goes, they're freaking good. Uh, but then he still has a 46-18 and 18 record, second in the East. Uh, he's actually known for his offensive prowess. Uh, that's where he got his name from. But his team yep. is second in defensive efficiency. And just uh, and he, they're over top the Lakers and the Clippers, who are really good defensive teams. He, they're just behind the Bucks, um, and then I think they still have a shot to upset the uh, Bucks this year, even without Kawhi. So, right. doing all right. this while losing your best player, I think Nick Nurse has got this in the bag. I'm glad that you agree. Yeah, and he like last year he just showed this. Um, the way he defended Giannis last year just proved that he's like he knows his stuff in coach like he, he has his weight worth in coaching and, and knows how to uh, manipulate a defensive scheme and also obviously you said offense so I 100% yeah it's Nick Nurse gotcha all right so the last award we're going to talk about is rookie of the year I'm taking Zion okay <laughs> he only played 20 games but the dude, when he came in, his team was like hot garbage before he came in. Now they have a positive record with him at eleven and nine. And if you take away the two where he had uh, uh, minute restrictions, they're eleven and seven. And they only have one bad loss in there against uh, the the Timberwolves, which they came back and beat. But outside of that, they've lost to teams like the Lakers, the Bucks. I mean, the Raptors. They they lost to teams that are up near the Playoff top teams. echelon. Yeah, right. And right. They've beaten some playoff teams as well. So, and that has, like, everything to do with Zion. The dude's coming off, like, he's averaging 23.5 points per game with minute restrictions. The The dude's a freak. And I am I love John Morant. I think he's done great this season. But even in 20 games, Zion has shown why he was the number one pick, why he's in everyone's conversation as being the next, the, you know, the one to hand over the torch from LeBron to Zion. Like, Zion is legit, but do you agree or disagree? I disagree, and it is because you disagree. He's him, legit. Uh, you don't think he's legit? No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. no, 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 no I'm I'm like, whoa, this, this, this no. got really <laughs> nauseous. <laughs> no, I, I was a Zion, a little bit of a Zion hater uh, when he first got out. I, I just thought the injury thing was going to get him, and he wasn't really going to develop a jump shot. Jump shot thing was 100% wrong. Like, obviously, you know, you're in a gym 24-7. You're going to develop a jump shot. That was a stupid take on my part. Bad bad, bad, uh, bad knowledge there. Um, but for my uh, defensive – or sorry, not deep, sorry, uh, uh, rookie of the year, sorry. Um, I got John Morant. I mean – uh, 17.6 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, uh, basically seven assists, pretty much shoot, or 49% from field goals, uh, shooting 36% from three for a guy that really was told he could not shoot, and then he went off. I think it was against the Rockets. Uh, James Harden, like, guarding him at the free throw line, and he started shooting. Uh, during that game, Ja, like, wasn't, like, a, a prolific shooter, like a three-point shooter. Um, so James Harden was guarding him, like, back at the free throw line, right? So, Ja, in response, shot a three, made it. James Harden kind of waved it off, you know, whatever. Ja Morant came back, hit another three. Uh, it, he, he's, a, he's a kid that accepts a challenge, and I think that um, he's played enough games, his numbers are good enough. Uh, he's had a 30-point game, he's had multiple games over 25, he's had multiple games over 20. He's getting his team right now, they're in the playoffs. I mean, like, that's He's he's in my opinion rookie of the year. Now I'm not saying that Zion would for now be a... for now <laughs> in the playoffs. Zion's coming. But Zion's none of coming. None of, but none of these games matter for the voting. So what has he already done? He's got his team in the top. Uh, there's seven right now, right? Eight, top eight, seven. Eight, eight. Eight. Okay. Regardless, top eight in the West in his rookie year. That's amazing. Because Zion wasn't playing, and now Zion's here, and they're going to take it back. 
Zion is taking. Look, he's coming in. He's going to sneak in, take the playoff spot, and he's going to take the rookie of the year. He's like, ah, John, you thought you had something your first year. No, no, no. Okay? No. Zion's coming to steal. He's coming to steal your girl. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. (laughs) They're coming for everybody out here. All right? Oh, man. That is, that's a tough take right there, but uh, we'll just have to agree to disagree, I guess. I don't know. I, I, hope, I mean, I hope that they get to play each other for that play-in, too. I really want to see that because that would just be, oh, be I mean, basketball heaven. Like, really, like, oh, my gosh. I, I'm i hoping for it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, that's fun. So that is the wrap-up for our awards, and now we're moving into our next topic here. And KP and I disagree on this one, too. Okay. All right. Who is taking the West? All right. And I think you guys all know where he's going because you can see how much of a bandwagon he is. Oh, stop it. Bandwagon. No, no. Clippers are taking this and they're giving the Lakers the business in the final, the conference finals. Okay. Kawhi and PG are obvious number one reasons why. But you have the number five defensive in, five in defense efficiency, and then they just added an all time defender and Yo uh, Joakim Noah. All right, Lou Williams is going to play. So there was talks that he might miss. Nope, he's yeah, back. He'll, he'll be so the Clippers yep. have the whole team. Lakers don't have Avery Bradley. They replaced him with you know Mister. I don't want to shoot a layup right at the last second to win this game. I would rather just dribble it out. J R Smith. Okay. I don't know how LeBron let that happen where J.R. Smith is back on his team after that performance, but it's happening. It's just, this is not going to be, it, they might sweep them. It could, it, I bet it's at oh, least in five. Stop it. It's at least in five. You're ridiculous. Okay. Clippers so in five. You're you're gonna Clippers later. in five. Clippers in five. All right, so let's talk about this for a second because you're, you're, this is off the wall. Okay, so a couple of things. First of all, uh, Kawhi and Paul George, great players. Um, hopefully nothing happens to them, but both uh, have had uh, injuries in the past. Uh, hopefully this rest has given them that time to <laughs> You're hoping all those for it. Don't lie. You're hoping. No, I'm, not. I'm really so not. LeBron I know, because here's, here's, here's the reason why I'm not. It, here's the reason why. It's, it's I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want any – I want every single player on the Clippers there. I want every single one of them there because then when LeBron beats them, everyone else has to shut up. Everybody has a shut up. So I want every single one of these players. I don't care about any anybody. I, I don't want them getting hurt. I don't want nothing. I don't want no excuses, tummy aches, none of that stuff. They are there. Okay? Don't get that twisted. Second point. All right? Second point. Um, Patrick Beverly is actually not with the team right now. He uh, is dealing with some kind of personal issue. Uh, he has no timetable for a return back to uh, Orlando right now. And I, like I said, I hope he's back. And he has what seven days before the, the like real game. He'll be back way, way, way before the conference finals. Well, if he's not back, if he's not back by the playoffs, or there's there's got to be a cutoff time to where these players can report because he's not allowed. He's not going to be allowed to miss all these games, all these different like COVID tests and things at the at the bubble, and all of a sudden show up at the bubble for the playoffs. That's I I don't see that happening. Yeah, he might miss the first series because he has to sit eight days or 10 days or whatever it is to make sure he doesn't have COVID, but he'll be back way before the conference finals. Don't worry. And the Lakers beat the Clippers last time. Like, what are you talking about? Kawhi the and the, Ra- the Clippers. The Lakers beat the Clippers and the Buck. On back. You just Those broke are the two up best teams in the league. Okay. You broke up a little bit there, but Kawhi in the regular season is like, really, it's not even a conversation. Okay, we all know that Kawhi just sits down and he doesn't give a crap about the regular season other than to make it to the playoffs. Kawhi in the playoffs is much different, and they're taking it, okay? The biggest the biggest knock on the Lakers is they are weak at the guard position, but you have LeBron James playing guard, so they're really not weak in the guard position. They're weak at people that are labeled as guards. They have uh, Rondo, who just broke his thumb. He's out six to eight weeks. Uh, they had Avery Bradley, but as you said, he's gone. They have Quinn Cook, who's solid, but not like he's not a player that you're going to have to start for a team. He's, he's a you know role player guy. Uh, and then they have Deion Waiters, and they have J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith is not a point guard. He's a shooting guard. He's a forward, whatever. Uh, Deion Waiters, he is a, a true point guard-ish type, um, but whatever, okay? So that's, that's their weak point. They, they are weak at the guard position, for sure. 
Now, where the, the Clippers are weak is their bigs, right? They have Ivaka Zubac. They have Montrez Harrell, who's six seven, not really a big, but he's positioned as a center for whatever reason. Um, Jamichael Green, uh, going off that Joakim Noah. Okay, Joakim Noah is 35. I know you like him. I know you said he's like a deep whatever, but he's nothing to LeBron. LeBron's seen Joakim Noah. He's played against Joakim Noah in the East when he was with the Bulls. Probably in his prime, he played against Joakim Noah, and took care of him fine on that Bulls team. When that Bulls team was at, like, the peak of, like, the Bulls since Jordan. So, I, I don't – I really I, – I understand, like, your theories. I understand, like, everyone likes saying this. But Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, Anthony Davis, LeBron James are going straight at any of their bigs, and they're going to score 100%. There, there's they have they have too much going on, too much going on with there. There's yeah, no way. Yeah, but they're not going to score enough. That's the oh, point. Oh, stop it. Okay, Get they'll wrong. score. You know, 90, 100 points a game, but that's not going to be enough then, when you get beat five. Gonna, so if they're scoring ninety or hundred points a game, they're going to give up what a hundred and ten points a game? Because you're saying it's going to be a sweep. It's not going to be close. Hundred does every game could be close. Every oh, game could be goodness. close, but it's going to be gone in five. And LeBron's going to have to go home, and it's going to be freaking awesome for everybody else besides the LeBron lovers, the LeBroninators. <laughs> He's so bad. I just, I just it, don't know it's how, so true, how, though. I'm not saying I, this in jest. I don't know. Clippers are going to the finals. I don't know how someone could be so okay? wrong the whole time. No, the, I don't know how someone could be so wrong for an hour straight. All right, we'll find out who's it's wrong. Tough. We'll, we'll, it's <laughs> tough. It's impressive. You're doing it great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is Carmen's crew all over again. <laughs> Carmen's crew. <yeah. laughs> Ghost of pain. No. All right. Now. We're going to move in. So those were not bold. Okay. It, it was bold for him, but it wasn't really bold. We're going to move into some bold, bold predictions. Okay. All right. And somebody this uh, week by the name of Charles Barkley made a bold prediction. That really gets under KP's KP's uh, skin here. Let's see here. Let's pull this up. All right. Let's let's go ahead. Let's just listen to uh, Charles to see what his bold prediction is. Here we go. Okay, Jackie, you got off. Portland. All right, Charles. Ew. All right, you got your poster if. ready for me, Ernie? No, it, no, no, you can't start a no. bold prediction with an if. Well, hold on. Let me tell you something. They got to get in first. I'm going to tell you this. If the Portland Trailblazers get in the playoffs, they will beat the Los Angeles Lakers in the first round. What? I, I don't Portland know, man. The Portland Trailblazers will beat the Los Angeles Lakers in the first round, according to Charles Barkley. How do, you do we have to talk about this? Do we have to talk no about shot. this? No <laughs> shot. Zero. Less than zero percent. The They're not even making the playoffs. Okay. Like he's 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 making he's really making two bull predictions. He's saying they're going to make the playoffs as the eight seed, yeah. which might not happen. Um, Zion and, coming. Okay. And the other thing is that they're going to beat the Lakers. No. There's no shot. The only Literally team no. I'm, that out of the out of the eight that has. An outside chance is the Pelicans, but they're severe underdogs as well. Like they, I no, I don't see the Lakers getting knocked out first round by any means. By any so, right. But Pelicans are the only team outside of uh, outside looking in that have a chance to come in and make some noise because of the great Zion and the rest of their young the team. Great. <laughs> the great. The, the rest of their team is really good too. So yeah. Uh, but as I said, I think the Lakers. But this leads to our own bold predictions. So, God, that's who, so bad. What, do bad you want to take. go first? Or you want me to go first? Uh, I mean, okay, I'll go. I'll go. Um, I, my my bold prediction, and maybe it's not bold because we kind of talked about this before. I think the Raptors are going to repeat as Eastern Conference champs. Um, I think they're going to represent the East in the playoffs. I know everyone's hyped up on Giannis and all that stuff, and. I, I agree. He's a great defensive player, and, and if he can ever learn how to shoot a three-pointer in, in a real game and when it matters, I mean, maybe. But I think the Raptors defensively are, are too good, and they've figured out how to play without a, a true superstar. So I'm going to go Raptors repeat as Eastern right. Conference uh, I'm going to show you how to pick a bold prediction here, all right? 
Go ahead. It's going to sound homery, but I just think that this is going to happen, okay? <laughs> Wizards will force a play-in series with no Wall, no Beal, and no Burton. <laughs> and they're bold. still <laughs> going to force a play-in. They're not going to make the play-in. They're not going to w- win two. They might beat the Nets, too. If the Nets are the one that they play, they may beat the Nets. But they're going to force a play-in series, okay, and win the first game. And win the first game, but they're going to lose the second game. They're going to lose the second game. They're going to force a play-in series (laughs) and make it. That, sir, is how you pick a bold prediction. Okay, 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 okay. So maybe maybe I didn't take this as serious as I should have. I'll make make a different prediction. Okay. Anyone besides... The Bucks or the Raptors will represent the East. <laughs> Anybody besides the top that's, two teams. That's that could be. Uh, Actually, hey, hey, you know what? You know what? You know what? Scratch everything I just said. I, I got a real one, an actual All right. real one. All right. The Heat will win the Eastern Conference. Oh, you like the Heat? The right? Heat, I do. The Jimmy heat. Butler, Bam Adebayo, I I like their team a lot. Uh, Tyler Hero is is a bucket. I love him. So we're going right. Heat. All right. Here's a bold prediction. <laughs> the Suns will not make the playoffs. <laughs> the Suns will not make the playoffs. I was like, okay. he's about to lose all credibility, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Suns, why are the Suns here? They have no chance. Okay? They, like, literally, like, it's not. Ha- they could win all eight games, and the chances are 0. 0.00001 that they even make the ninth seed. It's just not happening. This is ridiculous. Why are the Suns even here? It's amazing. But <laughs> it's all <right>. amazing. <laughs> all right. So true. Well, we're gonna finish the show here by going ahead and watch. We had some actual basketball. It was expedition games. Okay, it wasn't a, it wasn't going towards anybody's record. But we got some good highlights here that uh could be fun to watch. And first one up here is CJ McCollum tries to <laughs> tries to go up for one. And let's see how this turns out. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> top bounce pass to CJ. That hurts. Not quite there. <laughs> oh, he's that hurts a lot. Back. It's almost bad as that yeah. did play. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that's even called. Bra- the braided fade? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I am. That's, no. That haircut is a hair, you know, is a hair. Dog. It actually, it, it kind of looks like Jeremy Lin. Um. Back when he like did that little bun thing on the back yeah, of his yeah, head. If you're taking your, uh, if you're taking your uh, <laughs> choices from Jeremy Lin, you have you have gone gone too far. You do not you do not follow Jeremy Lin. And I would like to say that that's pretty much how I can dunk a basketball right now. <laughs> that's where I get and yeah, probably hurt myself. I would not that's, be spot. Dude, yeah. That's that's me on an eight foot hoop. <laughs> Oh, eight foot hoop. I'm putting that between my legs, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> Not I. All right, here we go. Next, this one, this dunk goes down. All right, this dunk goes. Yeah. And, uh, of course, that was the dunk. Don't, don't jump. Oh, why'd you jump? Why'd you jump? <laughs> Yeah, you're number 43, not 34. You're number 43, <laughs> not 34. All right? That is hey, Giannis same last brother. name, though. <laughs> that is Giannis' brother. He needs to flip those around. Because that's not happening. Again. Oh, jeez Louise. Not like that. Um, I mean, that dude, he got Louis. two steps and just hammers it. That. <laughs> oh, he tried hard. Right, okay? I mean. Mugo, number two, try, he tried. He did his best. He did his best. That, that was oh man, yeah. that's I'm just, sorry to see it. Oh, I let the next right. next video play. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> last one is a little bit of bowl bowl showing off some stuff here, Mister Seven Foot Six. Let's see what he's seven doing. two seven two oh, yeah seven two sorry yeah block. He wants yep. a goaltending, brings it all the way up, and pulls oh, up that... from 30. Bang! <laughs> Bang! Black off the backboard. Dude. Yeah, they're calling for the ball. They're like, okay, what is this big dude doing? Well, come on, give me the ball. Honestly, <laughs> though, that's probably a carry right there when he, like, lost that. But it's fine. We'll, we'll let it go because this is a cool highlight. Yeah, good, because he's seven foot. 
<laughs> Jeez. He looks like he's playing. He looks like he honestly looks like he's playing like in a little kid rec league. Like, which how long he is. It doesn't like he doesn't have to really jump that high. Like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Oh, here we go. What's this? Oh, another block. Wow. Well, that's all we got today. It was a little bit of a shorter show. Thank you guys for taking our member. Put in the comments the question of the day: LeBron or Giannis? LeBron or Giannis? Really, it shouldn't even be a question, but. Clearly, we have some special needs individuals on the show today. And <laughs> not even right. going to comment on that one. Awesome. Well, thank you. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed. Like the video, please. Share it with your friends. We just, you know, we're having fun. We want to grow a little bit and have, have a show. And we need your help. So help us out. Thanks, guys. But anyway, see you, KP. See you, guys. See you.